How about a tiny horse? A tiny horse. You can imagine that. Oh. Is a Happy Meal come in a box? Yeah. And you lift it and there's a little, and little just... horse that comes trotting out. Welcome to this brand new series of interviews hosted by HCV. What's lunch with a lecturer about? We're just trying to engage students in conversation with their staff and some of their lecturers. I'm Heather Passfield and I'm here with business lecturer and dean of the business school at Exeter University. Would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, my name is Robin Mason. Uh, I'm Pro Vice Chancellor of the Business School at the University of Exeter. I'm an economist, so I'm also a professor of economics. So I'm interested in why you became a lecturer. So I started life actually after I graduated. I worked in the city um, and enjoyed enjoyed that a lot. But actually found out that I didn't really want to work for anybody. I really wanted much more independence. I wanted to be able to uh, research the things that I enjoyed, teach the things that I enjoyed. So I went back to university to do a PhD to find out more about it and never left and have loved it as a career ever since. I've, I've been looking you up, not in a historical way, but in a professional interview way. Your first publication was in 1996. How have you changed since then? Oh, so I think about it, my first publication actually came out of my master's dissertation. A lot of my PhD work was actually about the economics of the, the environment and how you value and, and conserve the environment. Uh, my interests have changed since then, so it's become more regulation competition. Um, I think also I've become much more interested in how those ideas are used actually to shape policy. So I'm still, my academic research is still quite theoretically motivated, trying to define things, conceptualise them, but I do a lot of work now saying, okay, that's, there's a body of knowledge now, what does that mean for the way that we regulate? the wider scope. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You studied at Cambridge and you've also taught at Southampton and yep. you're now here at Exeter. Yep. Which one out of the three? No, it's a good question. They're all different, uh, but Exeter, I think, pips it for me. Happiness or money? Happiness. Star Wars or Star Trek? Well, it uh, depends which one. Oh, yes, that is true. But I suppose, given how old I am, Star Wars, because that was, I remember being uh, that age. Back in April, abs which is uh, the association of business schools, not the carved abdominal muscles that we all wish we had, uh, released uh, findings of uh, the social and economic benefits mm -hmm. of business research. Yep. And you commented on that, That's right. saying uh, that there is an imbalance of funding. Mm -hmm. uh, why do you think business research deserves extra funding? So a lot, of the, a lot of the research funding in the UK goes towards science, technology, engineering, medicine. Business research has this really useful role of um, turning science ideas actually into business propositions and products that will sell. So uh, while it's science, technology, engineering, medicine um, are rightly funded incredibly well in this country. The result is that those non-STEM subjects do suffer from, I think, a lack of research funding. But I think that is a function of this you know, high expense of science, big importance placed on it, and sometimes the UK government forgetting that there's this fantastically important subject, business and management, that should get funded as well. Any party tricks? Uh, oh, quite, quite a few, actually, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, One-handed handstand. Oh my gosh, that is. That's yeah. quite impressive. Yeah. Uh, do you think that theatre, television, the arts in general as a creative industries are worth an economic and social investment? Absolutely. Absolutely. My wife's a dancer. I am play a lot of music, or I used to when I had the time. Uh, I think as a, if, if, you want to, if that's what motivates you, do it. Uh, you may not earn a fantastic living from the arts, but actually the cultural and the social value of it far outweighs the economic return. So um, I suppose in a business school I should say, you know, just study business and accounting and economics, but actually I think if we didn't have arts, humanities uh, and those broader cultural subjects, we'd be the poorer for it. Maybe not economically, but certainly socially. I think that's a lovely point to end on. I would just like to thank you for coming. Sure. Um, and thank you guys so much for watching. This has been Lunch with a Lecturer. I'm Heather Passfield. Thank you. Or we can play like.
like one or two rounds. Go on. Do you want to do it? Okay. I think that's how it's made. When I am Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, I will create the Ministry of. Okay. Okay, right, you go first. Let me go first. Uh, not wearing trousers. Ministry of not wearing trousers. Yeah, and just think how much, you know, you'd save loads of costs, wouldn't you? Because you wouldn't have to. So true. Uh, there we go. Right, I go another one, do I? Um, what's the next Happy Meal toy? Uh, uh, I don't have a very okay. promising set That's here. That's all right. How about a tiny horse? A tiny horse. You can imagine that. Oh. Is a Happy Meal come in a box? Yeah. And you lift it and there's a little, and little just, horse that comes trotting out. Um, coming to the West End this year. Yeah. Blankton Musical. Here are your four cards. Okay. Here are my four cards. Okay, here we go. I'm going to put down Just Touching David Beckham's Hair, the musical. <laughs> Get your tickets now.